Here's how to build anything with Claude 3.7, the brand new model from Anthropic AI, even if you have no coding experience. This is a historical turning point in AI because this new model wipes the floor with OpenAI and DeepSea. As you can see from these insane benchmarks, Claude is now the best model in the world for code. Real quick, if you don't know me, I'm James. I used to work as a machine learning engineer at Uber and Amazon. I built two AI startups solo all by myself, and I've been building an AI for years. I just tried the new Claude model, and honestly, it's like having a world-class developer by my side with with exceptional taste. To test it, I told Claude, build a marketing website template using Next.js. Absolutely unreal. Throw a couple of these guys into agentic coding systems and you can have an autonomous agent for developing new products. If you haven't been taking coding agents seriously, you should now because otherwise I think you're just gonna miss out. With this release, Claude 3.7 is now a reasoning model. Like OpenAI's 01, it can think. And according to their benchmarks, it does extremely well. This is a roadmap Anthropic AI shared, and it's a glimpse into what the future is going to look like. In 2024, Claude assisted you with some tasks. In 2025, it's going to do hours of independent work by itself. In 2027, Cloud is going to pioneer its own solutions and be a leader on your team. To prepare you for that future, let's get building. First thing you're going to want to do is head over to Cursor and create a new project with an empty env file and the main.py and then go to the Anthropic console website to get your API key to access the Cloud 3.7 model. Once you have your API key, go ahead and throw it into the .env file just like this. Today, Anthropic also released Claude Code, which is kind of a terminal application where, for example, you can say, explain to me this project structure. Claude will go and then read the GitHub repo, the actual code, and then return to you the answer. It can also update the code, add to it. So it's basically a real life coding assistant that we've all been waiting for. I want to build something similar, but open source. We could use any framework to build our AI agent application, but I'm going to use Pydantic AI because to me, it is the number one agent framework and it's the perfect application for something where you need to build production ready level agents. The documentation is amazing. You can see here, they have a bunch of examples on different types of agents that you could do from bank support, customer support agent to SQL generation, and for today, the example we're going to build off of is this weather agent. What I'm going to do is just going to copy all of this code, this whole example, and then we're going to use this to build our real GitHub agent. So just going to paste that into there. So I pasted in the code and then I asked cursor, build the starter code for this agent, but I want to create an agent CLI interface where the user can paste in a GitHub repo link and the AI will retrieve the code from the GitHub using a tool. And I'm also, by the way, using Cloud 3.7 Sonnet inside Cursor. They made it available super fast. And you can see Cursor is off writing the new version of this agent. So all of this code so far, I just read through it. It looks great. As a first starting point, we are going to ask Cursor to make some updates to this. But for now, I'm just going to accept the file as is. I am very impressed with Cloud 3.7's coding ability so far. As you can see inside Cursor, it has suggested to even update the ENV file with the GitHub token, we'll need to access the public API. So Cursor has proposed two tools that the agent will use, fetch GitHub repo, makes sense. And then the other one, fetch file content. So I think this one is for reading the actual code inside the repo. So make sure to update your ENV file with your GitHub token. To get your GitHub token, all you need to do is go to github.com, go to your settings, and then you'll find this personal access tokens. And that's what you want to use. You might've noticed that the weather AI agent example uses GPT-4, but we want to use the new Cloud 3.7. So what we're going to do is scroll down here in the documentation. You can see here, they have an example of how to change the model to use Claude. So it looks like all we need to do is just change the model name. We go back to cursor and then change this to Anthropic with, and cursor's already filling it out for me. It's pretty cool, but no, it needs to be Claude 3, 7 Sonnet. I got an error and this Claude API key in the environment file actually needs to be Anthropic API key, not Claude API key. So I ran it again, but I noticed we're still getting the same error. But then I noticed we are not actually loading in the environment tokens. To do that, I'm just going to ask cursor, load in the environment API keys, please. And then now it's doing it. And that is exactly what I wanted. So I'll accept. Now everything should work. So let me run it enter in the same URL. Now you can see the GitHub agent is making a call to the fetch GitHub repo tool. Let's expand this, see what it's doing. And now it got back the analysis results and it's working. It said Logfire is a Python logging library, which it is, that appears to be developed by the Pydantic team, which it is. So it is. it has successfully used the tool to get the information 
about the GitHub repo, this one here, and then it has analyzed those results and then returned them to the user. And now I can basically ask anything I want about that repo. The reason I'm so excited about this application we've built so far is it's literally what Anthropic already built in their demo here. In this fancy demo, we built something extremely similar and it only took a couple of prompts inside Cursor AI. There's two changes I want to make. One is I want to create a where we can actually talk back and forth with the agent. And then secondly, I want to actually have it be a real conversation like the ChatGPT interface. Right now you just run the console and then it just ends. So we need to make that update, submit that. And these are the changes cursor came back with. So first off it created app.py, which is the main file that's going to host all of the UI related code for our app. So you can see here, it's added all of this code. And then next up, it's also created a requirements.txt just to have all of the Python libraries we need to install to run this app. And then finally just made a couple of changes, I believe to main.py to get the UI to work. So I'm just gonna go ahead and accept all of that. Looks good. We can always make changes later, So let's run it. You can see cursor added a example of how to actually run the Gradio UI app and it's just Python app.py, so run that. And by the way, cursor added conversation history, so now the chatbot will remember past chats it has. And this is our UI, it's running on localhost, looks great. I think Cloud 3.7 was fine-tuned on real UI examples because the UIs it creates for websites and apps is just really good, it's solid taste. And I'm gonna start by asking the chatbot, can you do a quick analysis of the Gradio app? the Gradio GitHub repo. And I'm going to send that. And I really like that it's added. I didn't ask it to do this, but it added this like chatbot logo when the chatbot's typing. So there's a lot of small details that I've noticed Cloud 3.7 do that 3.5 never did unless you asked it. It has ran some fetching to the GitHub repo, used the tool for fetch file content. The agent then got the files that it was interested in. Now I'm waiting for a response. Shoot. So I got an error code, but it's not actually my fault. It's anthropic because they are not allowing a rate limit above 20,000 input, input tokens per minute. So to get past this, I'm just going to potentially change the model type. So actually, I didn't need to make any changes to get it to work. I just said, just analyze two files and not more. The thing was the agent was searching seven or 10 files. And obviously that's going to exceed our token limit. So just ask it to probably in the system prompt. For this application, you can specify, do not search more than whatever your rate limit is for your AI provider. But this looks great. We now have a UI application where we did not, I should stress, we did not write a single line of code ourselves yet. Cursor has built all of this using the power of Cloud 3.7 Sonnet. And here you can see the result from the agent. It has analyzed the repo, including the init file. And it's given back this amazing outline of how the code works. This is fantastic. You can follow up with additional questions and asking how is error handling implemented or any of these other questions. I am going to actually update our system prompt to do that. I'm just going to select the agent, including the system prompt and click edit here, or you could run control K and then say uh, update the prompt to the agent shouldn't search more than two to five files to avoid the context window limit and then submit that edit. The cursor will go ahead and add this updated line for us, which I think sounds good. I'm just going to accept that. So I want to make this agent even more useful for us. So right now it can analyze any GitHub repo, but what I want to do is add something where the agent can actually create code in result of an action. So for example, I want to be able to give it a profile, for example, my profile on GitHub as a developer, and then it will read the profile and create a portfolio website autonomously by itself. So let's try to do that. I'm going to go back in cursor. I'm going to add the app.py. And I said, add a feature to our agent where a user can submit a GitHub profile and agent will read it and create a portfolio website code using HTML, CSS, render it below everything in the app. I'm going to submit that. Now cursor is going to update the file. So this is pretty cool. It's added this new fetch GitHub user tool, which will allow the agent to get the information it needs about any specified user on GitHub. And it's also added this tool called generate portfolio HTML. I'm not sure about the validity of this one. It says that this is just a pass through function that allows the agent to generate HTML. The actual HTML generation is done by the agent's reasoning. I'm not so sure about this one. We might remove it. Let's see how the agent performs with just that kept in for now. And then in app.py, it's made some updates to the UI where we will need to render the generated code as well as make some adjustments to the UI to allow the new feature. 
I accepted all of that. It also made some adjustments to the requirements.txt page. It's added markdown. So I just ran pip install dash r requirements.txt to make sure we have all the installed packages necessary. Now we can run python app.py to see our updated version. Cool, so let's try this out. I'm gonna say generate a GitHub portfolio. I'm going to use my profile here and then head back to Gradio, submit that. And then let's see what the agent does so far. So it is fetching the GitHub user and then running the tool generate portfolio HTML. If you remember, that's just a pass through function. So I'm not sure how exactly that's gonna work. We'll see. So it's came back with a response of actual HTML, but it looks like it did not actually complete it because it started on the style sheet, but it didn't actually complete it. So I don't think this pass through function for generating the portfolio HTML is actually needed. So what I'm going to do is just ask cursor to remove this code and the related code in app.py as well as for some reason, the agent is not generating the entire code. It's kind of stopping as you can see here. So I'm going to update the prompt to make sure it does. Now let me know in the comments if you want to see more of the step-by-step -step process, like in this case where I'm encountering errors and actually going through them, let me know. So it's updated the prompt. I'm just going to accept everything it gave me, but then I'm also going to say that make sure to not output text, only the HTML code. Because sometimes what I think the reason it's not rendering the code might be is that it's saying, here's the complete HTML code. And then writing the code, I just wanted to provide the code. So I'm gonna specify, do not say, here's your code, for example. And there you go. For debugging purposes, I've also asked Cursor to add a feature where it will print out the code to a new file so we can analyze what it's done. So third time's the charm. I'm going to submit this request, create a portfolio website for GitHub user me. Now we can see that the agent is fetching the GitHub user like before, but we're gonna see Oh, it actually has created this new folder called portfolios where it's going to store the new HTML created code. And there we go. We could see that it has generated. Let's see if it's actually finished. No, it's not actually finished. So for some reason, Claude is not generating the entire code, but you can see on the actual Gradio app, it is still trying to render half the page. And from what I can see, it's actually it looks pretty good so far. It just needs to be completed. To fix our problem, I asked Cursor to create this new tool called Complete HTML Structure. And what this does is the agent will provide the partial HTML that it might have completed. It's going to check if it has any unfinished HTML structure. So it's going to create this array list of missing elements. If there is a missing element found, it's going to add that to the list and then return that to the agent. Once again, it has fetched the GitHub user. In this case, it is me. And then it has called complete HTML structure a couple of times. I guess it didn't complete the code and then it noticed it when it used the tool. And then now it's recalling the tool. And as you can see, it has actually generated the final preview of the website. And now it's generated all of the HTML, which is perfect with the style sheet. So this is pretty cool. You could see it has grabbed the top repositories from my account. You can check my account to see if it's accurate. It definitely is. I can tell you that. I kind of like that it even has a link to my actual GitHub page, that's cool. So I wanna quickly summarize just what we've done so far. We've created a AI agent that can not only analyze specific repositories on GitHub and act as a coding assistant, but it can also generate and create code for portfolio websites using GitHub information. As I promised at the beginning, we have built an advanced AI agent using Cursor AI, and you can expand upon this massively. You can make sure that the agent has even more tools at its disposal to create the best possible portfolio website, or you can go more in the direction of the coding assistant and make a real life open source alternative to the Claude Code app. By the way, I created a new Discord server specifically for founders and builders in AI. It's not gonna be open forever, so join while you can. Let me know what you thought of this video in the comments, and I'll see you next time.